Mm. Is there any better smell than the fragrance of simple country bread from your own simple country kitchen? Cue the birds. Cue the cow. <laughs> Not that loud. <laughs> hey, Fran, come and look at who's on TV. Wow. Who is that? <laughs> It's Sarah Lipschitz from Flushing High. <gasps> she lost 50 pounds, changed her hair color, and learned how to use a tweezer. You know, Val, she was always voted most likely to become a shiksa. And now I have a surprise for our regular viewers. I, I finally realized my lifelong dream, and I've bought my own farm in the country. So in the near future, all of our shows will be brought to you from there. What does she know about living on a farm? The woman got poison oak visiting the nature company. <laughs> Ugh. That poor thing stuck all the way out there in the country. No stores, uh. no movies. Mm. Mm. And all the men all work with their hands. Uh. They're big and brawny and sweaty. Ugh. We should go visit her. <laughs> Joe Sarah, darling. Thank you. <laughs> Enjoyed your little joke about moving the show to the country. <laughs> Why is only one of us laughing? Go ahead and laugh. My mother's coming with me, and she loves the idea. I'm not living here. <laughs> you can't make me. Mom, I can't leave you all alone in that apartment in Queens. So buy me a bird. <laughs> Just try to be more positive. You haven't even seen the house yet. It dates back to the time of Thomas Jefferson. It still has all the original plumbing fixtures. Sarah, honey, I say this as positively as I can. How is that a good thing? <laughs> Where is Greg? Greg! And that's another thing. You're never gonna meet a man out here. Dating isn't a priority in my life. Obviously. Four million men in New York, and you're spending your time with some pompous married English schmuck. I resent that. I'm divorced. And, and we're not dating. He, he, he produces my show. We work together. Sometimes we go to business functions. He's not my boyfriend. I'm not even attracted to him. OK, Sarah, she gets the point. <laughs> So what do you think of the farm? Do you really, really, really just love, love, love it? Well, as your uh, unattractive producer, I must say I think it's a great idea shooting the shard here. Put a talking horse in the barn, I think we've got a hit. Listen, Greg, if I'm going to go on television every week telling people how to live the simple country life, I should live it. And besides, a home like this has been my lifelong dream. Is this a deer tick? No. That is. Great, I'm gonna die of Lyme disease. Oh, there's lots of ways to die in the country. You could be mangled by farm equipment. Drown in a manure pit. Did you ever read about a family of six getting murdered on the Upper East Side? No. It's always been a farmhouse. Go make some tea. Hello? May I help you? Yes, ma'am. Are you Sarah Campbell? Yes. Oh, I'm the foreman around here. Sorry I'm a couple of days late, but this is a busy time of year for my stud service. Oh, I had no idea it was seasonal. Bulls. I breed bulls. Oh, yeah. Of course you do, Ecule. It's Luke. The belt's on upside down. Oh, you really done the place up here. You the decorator? <laughs> There's no water in the sink, which may explain why Thomas Jefferson moved out. You have to prime the pump, which is behind the chicken coop. I'll just suck on the bag. Oh, come on, I'll show you how it's done. It gets a little messy. Uh, you won't be offended if I take my shirt off, will you? Maybe I could live here. <laughs> So, what 
what she like? Uh, she's like everybody else who ever owned this farm. I give her two months, and she's gonna hightail it back to Starbucks and Planet Hollywood and, you know, Studio 57. <laughs> Uncle Luke, it's Heinz 57 in Studio 54. I'm going out to feed my pig. Well, you just fed him five minutes ago, honey. Maybe he's hungry again. I'll just check. You really do love that pig, don't you, darling? Uncle Luke, she's force-feeding him with a funnel. I want to win the largest pig at the state fair again. First prize in kids eight and under gets a shotgun. All right, I don't want to hear another word from either one of you. Now, I promised my sister that if anything ever happened, I'd take care of the two of you and raise you up right. And that's exactly what I intend to do. Uncle Luke, when you promised Mom that you'd take care of us if anything ever happened to her, you didn't think anything was going to happen, did you? Hell no. <laughs> Hello? May I help you? <laughs> this is Sarah Campbell's house? Yes, it is. But I must warn you, if you're some sort of obsessed fan that's come here to dedicate your pathetic little life to her service, well, <laughs> I was here first. <laughs> oh, you're the wacko who was stalking my mother. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she hired me. <laughs> the lawyer said it'd be cheaper than getting a restraining order, so I'm in. <laughs> What are you doing here? It's fall break. Well, you know, like, um, spring break, but in the fall. <laughs> well, I, I'm so glad you're here. What do you think of our house? Well, Mom, I mean, it's one thing to have a condo in Manhattan decked out like a country farmhouse. At least there, you can step outside and hail a cab to therapy. <laughs> <laughs> but, darling, in the country, you don't need therapy. If you feel tense, you just milk something. <laughs> You're gonna love it here. The pace of life is so serene and peaceful. Where the hell are you? Everybody's waiting. Come on, come on, come on. Now, I want you teamsters to be careful out there. We're on a farm. If you hit it, you've got to eat it. <laughs> this is your mark. This is your camera. And this is the wonder bra. Great. I just want you to try it. No. <laughs> oh, honey, honey, stay. We can talk while they do this. So, how is school? Tell me everything. Well, you actually... move. You're in the turkey's key light. Uh, don't go too far. I, I really want to talk. Okay. Hey, 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 hey. I can't see the monitor. Miss Campbell, I think you should see this. No, I don't have time to look at a magazine right now. I'm talking to my daughter. Where is she? It's Martha Stewart wearing that blouse. Wardrobe! <laughs> Sarah! Since you're changing anyway. No! Excuse me? Listen, I just got back from the feed store. There's trucks in the cornfields, and there's a cable everywhere, and this stupid-looking Italian sports car blocking my barn. It's an English sports car. Oh, that explains why it didn't start. <laughs> so where's Miss Campbell? I'm trying to run a farm here, and I've been lied to, pushed around, and insulted by some of the rudest people I ever met in my life. I mean, what the hell is this? It's television, my good man. People, uh, before we get started, I just want to thank you all for coming all this way to make this possible. I made each of you a simple life birdhouse. <laughs> It, it's an exact replica of my barn. <laughs> it's just my way of saying you're all very special. Uh, wasn't like this on Tic Tac Toe. We never gave a damn. She built birdhouses for 50 people? Yeah, she only sleeps four hours a night. Even then, she's pressing wildflowers under her box spring. <laughs> I don't know what you do around here, but I'd find another job. I mean, she's not bad looking, but she's a little squirrely. She's okay. You know, she's just wound a little tight. And she wants her daughter to be exactly like her, and it's never gonna happen. And how do you know all that? I'm her daughter. <laughs> you know, squirrely's a compliment on a farm. <laughs> what on earth is the matter with you? I'm just so happy to be part of this family. <laughs> Me? Okay, here we go. In five, four, three, two. Hello, 
I'm Sarah Campbell, and welcome to The Simple Life. That's my taxi. I can't take the country. Although I'll miss you very much. You can't leave. Look, look, Frederick is here. It's fall break. There's no such thing as fall break. Did you get kicked out of school again? Yeah. First, every private girls' school in Manhattan. Are you going to continue this on the college level? You've got to move on. That is totally unacceptable. What, Mom? The timing's bad for you? Don't worry. I do it so often. Eventually, I'll hit the right moment. Frederica. Frederica. Very good, then. On with the show. Now, would anyone who's not holding a camera, a microphone, or a donut please get out of the kitchen? Excuse me, Mrs. Campbell. What are you still doing here? I can't get into my barn to feed my bull. He's not in there. We needed the space for a wardrobe rack. <laughs> You let him out? No, he just went when I opened the door. <laughs> well, where the hell is he? Well, why don't you go and look for him? Because he's not in the bloody kitchen. <laughs> what is this, another break already? here. Mom? Was that Freddy? No. I was checking on my pizza. The nearest Domino's is in Yonkers. It's delivered in five hours or it's free. <laughs> Freddy? Sarah Lipschitz! <laughs> uh, you know, my mother gave me the directions, but I can't go by her. Huh? She's in Fen Fen withdrawal. <laughs> Uh-huh. Uh, okay, so we go five miles down the road, and then we make a left at the two donkeys. Okay. All right. Well, we'll see you soon, Sarah. Bye. Oh, thank you. You know, you may want to stay up there a couple of more minutes. Do we have to make another call? Well, we're thinking about it, Val. <laughs> Just gonna take off an inch, inch and a half. I'll leave it long in the back. <laughs> so, you have kids? <laughs> what are you doing? I'm shearing a sheep. I realize it's 11 at night and I could buy wool in a store and no one would care. But I care. Okay? I admit it. Here in this barn, in upstate New York, I admit that I am a nutso craze perfectionist who drives everyone away because I need every detail perfect. I was just gonna say you're holding the clippers upside down. <laughs> my life is out of control. How do you figure? Well, my daughter just flunked out of school again. My, my kitchen was destroyed by a horny bull. And my producer keeps trying to convince our insurance company that we're covered for stampede. At least your mother's still here. Well, that's only because I told her you were gonna chop wood in a Speedo. <laughs> you don't have to do it. Have you ever done this before? Yes. Okay, no. But that doesn't mean I can't. I am America's, America's for foremost authority on country living. I know. I went down to Betty's book nook and checked you out. I've read 13 books. Entire bestseller just on toast. <laughs> That one just wrote itself. Uh, you're, you're not doing it right. Just clamp it between your legs and go fast. Have you met my ex-husband? Listen, it doesn't mean that you're not an independent and remarkable woman if uh, you just let me show you how to shear them. Wait, I'll... Hop on. <laughs> Gee, your sheet smells terrific. Uh, yeah. You you have to wash and condition before a cut, otherwise it doesn't hang right. <laughs> Everybody knows that. <laughs> right, snowball. No, 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 no. You don't start naming the farm animal. Why not? 
because unless that lamb's first name is Rackov, you're setting yourself up for a heartbreak. Uh, I, I don't uh, really need any more of that. Well, you can't expect your daughter to be exactly like you. Well, who said I expect that? Well, she did. She also said you were a little squirrely, but I told her to show some respect. I thought moving to the country was going to make my life simple. Life ain't simple, no matter where you live it. Although, if you lived here somewhere else, it might make mine a lot simpler. I thought I heard chopping. No, no. <laughs> Not yet, Mother. Okay. Call me. Damn freaking bomb chicken crap! <laughs> it's not my fault! It's not my fault that damn cow would ever chase me a mile down the driveway! I think he likes you. Next time you come, I wouldn't wear that musk oil for men. What are you doing here? Oh, great news. Everyone loves the whole Sarah Campbell on the farm thing. We can really cash in on this. We'll put the restaurant here, the, the souvenir shop. Of course, we'll have to pave those fields to make a parking lot. Well, then it won't be a farm anymore. That's a good point, Jethro. <laughs> so, you won't be necessary anymore. You can just hop on your bull and ride out of town. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. Everybody just hold on. I mean, do, do I want to take on more, or, or do I want to pay attention more to what I already have? I mean, where is it written that I have to be a miserable, workaholic perfectionist? Well, I'm sure it's in your contract somewhere. <laughs> I think your daughter's home. Excuse me. So, oh, uh... You did this, didn't you? You said something to her. Some sort of damn cracker barrel homespun wisdom you picked up on Hee Haw? No one talk to me that way if I was you. Why not? Because your car's stuck in the mud and you might just find yourself walking across that pasture all alone. <laughs> I'm Will. I'm your mother's caretaker's sister's son. So, naturally, we're gonna be very close. <laughs> Are you hitting on me? No! No! I just wanted you to know that while you're here, I'd be glad to show you around the farm, the barn, haystacks, hayrides, the hayloft. <laughs> <laughs> Indian dreams. <laughs> oh, that's already a given. <laughs> You're still here? Well, I only need four hours of sleep. <laughs> it's amazing how much I'm like your mother. <laughs> you must think I am such a jerk. I mean, you think she's so great, and I can't even get through one day with her. <clears throat> eh, you wouldn't understand. Well, it's hard being the daughter of someone who's achieved so much. I mean, the pressure is enormous, and anything you do will just pale in comparison. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Oh. Melanie, I see you've glued a pine cone to your head again. <laughs> There's alcohol in what's left of the kitchen. Will that dissolve the glue? No. I'd like a drink. <laughs> Rough day, huh? Oh, actually, it, uh, it worked out okay. It always does. For you. Well, I'm, I'm very good at creating the illusion of a happy home. But the really happy home is the one you're happy to come home to. Mom, if that shows up on a mug, I will sell your prom picture to hard copy. <laughs> Look, uh, let, me, let me just say it. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I should have realized a long time ago that my way is not always the right way for, for you. I just can't go to a school where they can expel you for wearing white shoes after Labor Day. <laughs> you didn't. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, let's compromise. You know, there's a community college in town. Mom, you went to community college and you hated it. I, I know, but, but I'm me and, and you're you. And you could stay here. Do you want me here? I mean, 
You've got Grandma. Yes, I really want you here. <laughs> then I want to be here. But, Mother, you are not going to change me. Oh, honey. Of course I will. <laughs> Mom, where are you going? Luke's pushing Greg's car out of the mud. He's wet. He's muddy. And we don't get cable out here. <laughs> The Simple Life. We'll be right back. Oh, Sarah Lapshaz, if you can hear us, we're lost. Did you hear something? <laughs> Hello! There it is again. What is that? Probably one of my heifers wandering around out in the field. Too dumb to find the barn. Oh. Oh. Maybe she'll be okay in the morning. I'm getting ready to turn my bull loose out there, and he's feeling awfully frisky. stand right there. You think? I've been doing a lot of research about the origins of this farm, and I really want to restore its historical flavor. I can't go back in time, Miss Campbell. Believe me, I've been trying since the day you got here. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm putting up a weather vane. I, I don't want a weather vane. We had one. It squeaked all night, so I finally took it off and hauled it to the dump. Ugly thing, too. Big, stupid-looking rooster with a big, stupid-looking tail. <laughs> it looked a lot like that one. Oh, no. I paid $800 for this at the town antique store. With the one next to the dump? Uh-huh. They have such great stuff. I don't know where they find it. You know, no previous owner of this farm has ever set foot in my cabin. Well, I think you'll find that I'm a very different owner from the previous ones you've had. No, you don't understand. There was a rule. <laughs> look, I don't want you messing with my house. The rains are coming. Now, look at those cloud patterns. Well, hey! Oh! Uh... <laughs> Well, you know, I, I don't think you're right about the rain. This ducks down isn't very dense. That means a dry winter. Don't you farmers say ducks down light, farmers delight? No, we don't. <laughs> if anybody tried, the other guys at the feed store would beat the crap out of them. <laughs> Look, I'm telling you, it's gonna rain. Now, I'm gonna go move the cattle to higher ground. Don't destroy my house. Well, you know, technically, uh, I, I own the whole property, so technically it really is my house. Uh, guess you're right. But technically, this is my ladder. Hey, what, what, what are you doing with that? Hey, come back here with that. That's my daughter, Sarah Campbell, expert on country living. Pretty convincing for a girl from Queens taping a show in Manhattan. One day, she decides to move her show to a real farmhouse in the country. But why do I have to go? Why does her producer have to go? And her daughter? And who's going to run this farm anyway? Okay. Maybe I could live here. I've been leaking all morning. Yep. Look at this. At least a cup and a half of water in there. <laughs> a 
Okay, kids, get out of here. Is it dangerous, Uncle Luke? Nope. But there's getting ready to be some serious cussing. <laughs> Partially responsible for this. Partially? <laughs> Were the holes in the roof really that bad? Well, the water got all pent up and then it just exploded. <laughs> That's nature. <laughs> Excuse me. I may be a woman. Yeah, buddy. Yes. <laughs> but there is no way that that much water came from that drizzle last night. Unless someone crawled up there and drove a nail through a water pipe. It was a big drizzle. It was an El Nino drizzle. <laughs> now, I'm going to need you to go ahead and rebuild the whole roof. <clears throat> All right. Now, there are going to be people living in the house. Uh, no. No, they'll come up and stay in the main house while you're working. Right. Excuse me? It's my roof, my family, my problem. I figure I run you about $10,000. You talk to the lady. <clears throat> Uh-oh. Paint samples, swatches, little teeny furniture. I know what that means. You didn't take your Ritalin. Mother. Well, what is all this stuff? Sketches of the farm, just as it was in 1790. And look, diaries of the original owner, Sarah Worthington. Isn't it amazing, Mother? This farm was owned 200 years ago by another woman named Sarah. I am freaking. <laughs> Oh, oh, listen, listen. Um, today was a fine spring day. I dipped candles, made soap, turned the hay, took apples to neighbor Jones, plowed the back 40, and helped the horse foal. P.S. I also bore my eighth child. <laughs> Sarah Worthington bore eight children? Don't feel bad, Mom. You bore me. Oh, well, thank you, sweetheart. <laughs> Here's the rest of the stuff from the Historical Society, Miss Campbell. Where have you been? I thought you were following me. Oh, I lost you. <laughs> you know, that never would have happened back when I was stalking you. <laughs> but, uh, I don't know, since I've become your assistant, I've really lost my edge. <laughs> Sarah, if you remodel Luke's cottage, you're gonna lose him. The three leading causes of couples breaking up. Remodeling, infidelity, and impotence. I know. I've been through all two of them. <laughs> it's ridiculous. You act like Luke and I are married. Honey, I'm home. <laughs> oh. Oh. This is going to be so much fun. You know, this is the way this house should really be. It's full of people. I've always dreamed of having my big farm family in my big farm house. Melanie has found us a treasure. <clears throat> we believe that this may be the actual bell the original owner used to call her family to meals. <laughs> Whenever it's time for a meal, you will hear this sound. Melanie. As for your sleeping arrangements, I've made a list. Uh, Mother, you will be sleeping with Luke. <laughs> okay, Mother, where's the list? <laughs> Was worth a shot. Hey. Okay. Mother, you'll be sleeping in my room with me. Will can take your room. Charlotte, you'll be sharing with Freddie. What about me? Oh, uh, you'll be on the couch here. I wish we had another bedroom, but we're kind of packed in. Uh, anyway, it's probably better that you're on the ground floor with all us girls upstairs. Oh, yeah. Otherwise, I know my parents would never let me come. <laughs> Anyway, uh, it's only for a short time. The contractor said it would be 10 days, two weeks tops. Wow, it 
it's really coming down, isn't it? <laughs> Who would have thought it could rain like this for three weeks without a let up? <laughs> Not me. <laughs> huh. Who's in there? Who's taking so long? Uncle Luke shaving. And who's using Mr. Steam? <laughs> of course, we wouldn't have to stand in line like this if the other two bathrooms were still working. Oh, I'm sorry. My pet died. You told me to flush it. A goldfish, honey. Not a chicken. <laughs> Mom, I don't mind Charlotte, but I didn't know I was going to be rooming with Wilbur the pig, too. Last night, he crawled under the covers and he cut one. <laughs> I miss your grandfather. <laughs> you know, Mother, until you started staying in my room, I didn't know you watched VH1 all night. Hey, everybody knows you don't sleep as much when you're older. Why do you think they show those videos of Aerosmith all night? So people like me can look at Steven Tyler and say, hey, I'm aging pretty well. What is taking so long in there? Okay, who took my bathrobe? Oh, Luke, nobody stole your bathrobe. Nobody wants to see you parading around in a towel. Boy, it is coming down out there. <laughs> Just, just use mine. Everybody is so short-tempered around here. At least Luke and I have maintained our dispositions. Don't say anything. Very few people could pull that off. I'd like to try. You know, Muriel, I like you. I've always liked you. But somehow, staying in the same house with you for three weeks, that kind of comment's really starting to get on my nerves. There, okay? <laughs> Tonight, we are having the very same dinner that Sarah Worthington served to her husband's militia. <laughs> you know, he was a minute man. Again, I miss your grandfather. Hi. Get off my bed. You're going to bed? It's 8 o'clock, for God's sake. Well, I got up at 4, which is the only time you can use the facilities around here without having an audience. Wait for you to come out in some frilly lady's bathrobe. You've got a whole secret life I didn't know about, don't you? Luke, dinner time! <laughs> okay. Who stomped on my historic dinner bell? Who didn't? I can't go to bed. Dinner's on the table. Miss Campbell, I just stopped by to see if that plastic on your roof was keeping the rain out. Good. Well, it's not. <laughs> you might want to have someone take a look at that. <laughs> what about you? I already did. Look bad. Yeah. Uh, uh, may maybe you could fix it? All right, but I'll probably get stuck here overnight. You know, roads washing out, and you know what they say. Stuck overnight. Contractor's delight. I've never said this to a room full of people before, but I don't want to sleep with any of you. <laughs> Ta-ta. You mean I'm sleeping here? <laughs> I mean, I've slept here before, just never inside the house. Yes. <laughs> no, no, honey, you, you go with Greg. Uh, I can't take her. My car has an airbag, not a net. <laughs> yes, <that's right. laughs> Greg, Greg, she's harmless. Well, can't we just wait for the mothership to come get her? <laughs> Mr. Champlain. <laughs> oh, but one thing. No seatbelts. I don't like being strapped down. <laughs> Bad memories. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sounds like we're going to be stuck here for a little while longer. I think we're just going to have to make the best of things. This work should have been done a week ago. That contract of yours is worthless. You recommended him. No, I didn't. You said I couldn't find a better contractor. No, I said, you couldn't find a better contractor? Oh. <laughs> I've had enough. Just come in to dinner. Well, I'm tired. Just bring me a sandwich or something. 
I have been slaving over this dinner all day. The least that you can do is come in, sit with your family at the table, and eat it! <laughs> <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Fine. Here's your sandwich! Yes. Where? Come in and eat the damn dinner! Please listen to yourself. I feel like we're married, except we're not having sex. Believe me, if we were married by this time, we would no longer be having sex. <laughs> yeah, and if we were, you'd probably announce it by banging on that dang bell! Oh! <laughs> you... I heard Luke, sex, and banging. Whatever it is, count me in. Perfect. We drove past the storm, but we're stuck in the mud. You mean overnight? Both of us? <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure one of us will have to leave. You know, my psychiatrist has told me that I shouldn't fixate so much on Miss Campbell. He thinks that I should get some new interests, although I can really only focus on one thing at a time. <laughs> no, that's not good advice. You've been stalking Sarah for years. Stick with your strengths. But then why would my therapist say that? <laughs> well, maybe he's out to get you. Maybe he's a crazy one. <laughs> Ever thought of that? I have always thought exactly that. <laughs> Greg, you are like a mirror into my soul. Melanie, I was coming up here to get help. Of course, the kind of help she needs is far beyond me. <laughs> get Luke. I need him to tow my car out of the mud. Luke's not here. What? What? Where is he? You had a fight, didn't you? Everything I said would happen happened, didn't it? We don't need him. If he's being unreasonable, fine. Sarah, let me explain our situation in the form a little song. <laughs> Sarah Campbell had a farm. E-I-E-I-O. <laughs> and when she drove away, the only one who knew how to run the farm, she lost her show and a producer strangled her with his bare hands. E-I-E-I-O. <laughs> Let's go get Luke. Oh, yeah, obviously, I'm the problem here. Well, at least move the chair. No, this is my chair. It's my spot. I like it here. Don't change anything. God, you're, you're drenched. I don't care. And now I'm drenched. Here, plug this in anywhere. Oh, see? He is impossible. And what have you got on your head? Some kind of cowboy shower cap? I assume the begging his forgiveness part is yet to come. I am not going to beg his forgiveness. He's one of those people who's so screwed up that they can't be helped by normal human interaction. He needs professional help. Well, yeah, where'd you get that? My analyst. <laughs> Excellent idea. Couples therapy. I went through it with all three of my divorces. It really works. <laughs> the hell down and tell me what you two think the problem is. Him. Her. Well, now we're making progress. Look, I don't want to do that fruity tooty thing where I tell you about some dream I had. Oh, have you had one? Because we can learn hidden complex secrets through the, the symbols in them. What happened? Well, I killed her because she wrecked my house. Oh, God. Even your subconscious is so shallow that you can't even come up with a complex thought. Yeah, well, shut up. <laughs> Breakthrough. You two don't hate each other. You're just sick of each other because you can't fix your roof and it won't stop raining. Now, if you'll pardon me, I'm going to go speak to someone about it. 
You stop reading! Stop it, I say! <laughs> Ten million dollars! Joking! I'm a joking! Well, I didn't get a chance to tell my dream. My dream was that I was Sarah Worthington. And that I could handle a whole house full of people with no TV and no bathrooms and was happy. But I guess I just can't measure up. Sarah Worthington? That's what this is all about? Yes, you, you've heard of her? Sure. She's a local legend around here. Uh, you see, they had a, a little poem about her. It uh, goes, uh, Sarah Worthington had too many kin. So she chopped them and chopped them and chopped them again. <laughs> Oh, my God, she killed all of them? Yeah, stacked them up by the barn like cordwood and then went in the house and made taffy. <laughs> but she was crazy. You always know exactly what to say to make me feel better. Well, uh, I'll do my best. <laughs> I found this pretty young thing wandering around in the mud. <laughs> By rights of salvage, she's mine. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> the Simple Life will be right back. I made up a large batch of my special medicine this morning, and I partook of quite a generous portion. When I was feeling sprightly, I called on neighbor Jones, who is always a reliable source of pleasure, and from whose loins sprang my youngest too, unbeknownst to John. After that, I repaired to the barn where after another hearty dose of medicine, I undertook to dispose of John's parents. They were tenacious old coots, and they clung to life until I finished them off by bashing their skulls in with my sturdy dinner bell. <laughs> Sarah Worthington, 1817. Okay. Now I kind of like her. Hey, we're rehearsing. So let's have some quiet. Greg. Are you sure this is coriander? Because it looks like flat leaf parsley, and I don't want to get a lot of angry letters. For God's sake, Sarah, it's minced. And it's in a long shot for all your audience knows it's chopped up grass on the lawn out there. Which, of course, we'd never do. Big. I moved my television show to the country because I wanted it to be totally authentic, and these eggs were not recently laid. So few of us have been. <laughs> No more fake anything. Oh, we have to touch up your roof. Yeah, I'll be right there. <laughs> I want it to be about real country living. Sarah, look around. Nobody in this kitchen knows a bloody thing about real country living. Oh, I shouldn't be here. No, no. I have a million questions I need you to answer. That's why I don't want to be here. Luke, you grew up on farms your whole life. Now, what do you think of this? What is it? A chicken coop. If I lived in a coop, I would want it to look like this. Well, I'm sure someday you'll get your wish. Well, w what about these chickens? Do they look real and authentic? They're awfully quiet. Greg, you... Look, I have no idea what you're trying to do here. Is, is this... Supposed to be real farm life or some fruity TV show? Real fruity farm TV life. Fruity TV show. <laughs> well, it's her show, isn't it? Look, you don't know anything about television. I'm the producer. I make every single day-to-day -day decision affecting the show. She's the star. She just shows up on shoot days and reads her lines. So who do you think's in charge? She is. As yes, well, apparently you do know something about television. <laughs> is this 
see, Cass, because I'm not getting my joke. Look, I really gotta go. I got five sweaty guys out there unloading hay. That'll do it. <laughs> That's my daughter, Sarah Campbell, expert on country living. Pretty convincing for a girl from Queens taping a show in Manhattan. One day, she decides to move her show to a real farmhouse in the country. But why do I have to go? Why does her producer have to go? And her daughter? And who's gonna run this farm anyway? Okay, maybe I could live here. Jolly good day, what? Hmm. I've got my stimulating three-hour commute back to New York City. Those 30 miles of which will be bumping down some dirt road behind some slow-moving hay truck with a bumper sticker which reads, Honk if you married your cousin. <laughs> Miss Campbell? Did you know this woman? She tried to get in without a crew pass. No, I, I know, but <laughs> she doesn't seem to be much of a threat. Uh, I'm Sarah Campbell, and, and, and you are... The Howdy Do Club? Howdy? Oh. <laughs> Howdy Do to, to you, too. I, Greg, do we really need this kind of security? But there was gunfire on the property this morning. It was just a little BB. Well, it hurt. <laughs> Are you aware that your niece is a homicidal maniac? It's not her fault. It's those voices in her head. <laughs> uh, excuse me, Ms. Campbell. Are you doing anything on Saturday afternoon? No. Why? Well, there's a potluck supper down at the church. Uh -huh. Pretty much the whole town will be there. Uh -huh. So I was wondering if, if you weren't busy... Could you sign for a shipment of manure I'm expecting? Well, I just don't know. Maybe I'll go to the potluck supper, too. After all, I am a part of this town. I gave up my condominium in Manhattan, and I am committed to living here as a full-time citizen of... Sedgwood. Is that right? I'm pretty sure. Are, are you really interested in coming to this thing? Well, why not? Well, I just didn't think you'll fit in. Oh, well, you'll be surprised. What's it like? Well, it's the usual, you know, a, a pie contest. I like pie. A potluck supper. I can cook. And a cow pie bingo. Uh, same old, same old. <laughs> All right, what the hell is that? Well, you, you, you stuff a cow full of feed, and you set him loose in a parking lot marked with bingo squares, and wherever he drops his load... Bingo. <laughs> Oh, you know, if I didn't have tickets to La Traviata, that's where I'd be. Well, I think it sounds like fun. Well, you want to go with me then? Oh, look, I'm, I'm flattered, but I really don't think it's a good policy for people who work together to, to date. You know, things can get very awkward and uncomfortable and confusing. I wasn't asking you out, Miss Campbell. I would never do that. <laughs> oh, good. Why? <laughs> Well, I work for you. We got nothing in common, and you're not really my type. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> now no one's uncomfortable. Besides, uh, you don't take a pretty lady to the church basement for a hot time. Take her to the choir loft. <laughs> Look, it's, it's a family event, okay? You know, I'm taking the kids, and Charlotte, she's got a chicken entered in the chicken races. Chicken races and cow pie bingo? It's the Hee Haw Olympics. <laughs> Sarah, you're forgetting one thing. If you go, who's going to sign for the manure? <laughs> but I'm a television producer. What do I know about delivering huge loads of steaming, stinking crap? <laughs> oh, very well, I'll do it. <laughs> Committed to entering this pie contest at the church supper. So I want to do a really good job. Now, I don't have to win, but if I don't place it all... Oh, can you imagine if the tabloids got a hold of that? It would be O.J. all over oh. again. Why am I so nervous about this? Well, Mom, it is your first date in a while. You haven't had a man touch you since Hands Across America. Eddie, it's not a date. Thank you, Mother. I heard he made that embarrassingly clear. Excuse me? Would anybody like to bet a dollar that my chicken will win the chicken races? You little children making book and a bunch of poultry? Yeah. You know how to set up a trifecta? So, we've decided to forego the usual phony showbiz angle 
and make the show genuine, 100% country. You hate it? It was Sarah's idea. <laughs> I, I don't know what you want me to do. Is that physically possible? Wow. You're like a hotshot TV producer, huh? Have you done anything else I might have seen? Do you watch a lot of TV? No. I created ER. <laughs> So are you going to put us all on TV? Oh, yeah. That's a great idea. If I send the network footage of what this place is really like, we'd be back in New York City on our set so fast. <laughs> Greg, you have a strange look on your face. You know, not all the mushrooms in that field are edible. <laughs> You always cut yourself when you're nervous about a date. It ain't a date, and I'm not nervous. Ow! Ow, ow, I'm handsome. <laughs> Why are you shaving in the kitchen sink? Well, Charlotte's been in the bathroom for about an hour. Oh, not again. Well, Charlotte's becoming a young lady, and there are certain feminine rituals they have that take, you know, a little time. She's shaving her chicken's legs. What? <laughs> she read it in a magazine. Some Olympic guys do it so they can run faster. Charlotte, get out of there! Here, go put these in the dryer. The dryer's broken, Uncle Luke. Mm. <laughs> oh, please don't shout. This chicken's racing tonight. She needs a calm atmosphere so she can remember all the love and training I've given her. Well, I'm sorry, sweetheart, but, uh, Charlotte, darling, uh, what if your chicken didn't win? We'll kill her and eat her. I'm gonna put my aftershave. Hello? Hello, can I come in? Oh, just a minute. Just oh. Oh, I beg your pardon. Oh, it's okay. I'm a I'm decent. <laughs> yes, you are. What? Uh, nothing, nothing. I I just want to make a good impression at the dinner tonight. So What do you think? Well, we're going to church supper, not Dollywood. <laughs> hey, wh why don't you just wear a pair of jeans and a flannel shirt? Oh, that is so unimaginative. What are you wearing? A pair of jeans and a flannel shirt. <laughs> hey, just, just wear whatever you're comfortable in. You know, I mean, nobody really cares what you look like at these things. Okay, here are the three shirts you wanted to pick from. I am the mall extra special, like you said. Uh, thanks, Charlotte. <laughs> Five bucks. Uh, She's adorable. Yeah, and rich. What are these? Rodeo trophies. Yeah, I used to, uh... Southwest Regional Bareback Champion. Yeah, I used to ride a little. What made you stop? Well, I hurt my back riding Big Red. Oh, who's she? <laughs> That's Big Red. <laughs> Actually, uh... You know, my sister, she passed away, and, and I got the kids, so... God, I, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm crying. Uh, it's all right, Miss Campbell. Well, it couldn't have been easy. A bachelor all of a sudden getting a family. Ah, oh, well, running a house isn't near as difficult as you make it out to be on your TV show. It's just a matter of organization. Something burning? <laughs> My socks! <laughs> ow, ow. <laughs> I like the much better pan fried. <laughs> Anyway, about tonight, you know, whatever you wear, you're going to do great. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Miss Campbell, how strongly do you believe that, you know, people who work together should never date stuff? Well, I mean, I guess some rules are made to be broken. All right, then. Next time Catrice delivers manure, I'm gonna ask her out. Man, that woman is built. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Campbell. You've given me the confidence to do this. I know it's hollow. I know it's nerve-wracking to walk into a room full of strangers, but don't worry. We're we'll all stick together. Here's the food. I'll see you guys later. 
Mom, you know that guy that you're not on a date with? That woman over there is all over him. Freddie, I don't care. I'm just here to meet my neighbors. I think I'll meet her first, since she's so damn friendly. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Does this approach generally work for you? Actually, yes, but we're a simple people. <laughs> oh, hi. Hey, so you finally got here. <laughs> yes, I see you started without me. Uh oh, Miss Campbell, this is my friend Sheila. Hello. Now, Sheila and I, we go way back. Yeah, we were both in the choir. Oh, really? <laughs> the choir. I can't tell you how many times we sang hallelujah together. <laughs> Well, um, if you excuse me, I'm just gonna go get some supper. So there it was. A goiter as big as a Volkswagen. Now, I know what you're thinking. Save a few bucks. Drain it at home. You're not gonna finish that? No. Hello, everybody. Great opening. Don't worry, I warmed him up for you. This looks delicious. Oh, you like that? I made that. <laughs> it's exquisite. What do you call this? Kraft macaroni and cheese. No, you've done something with this. I taste um, lemon pepper and um, sherbet. That's right. What about the fried chicken? Did you try that? Mmm. Oh. Mmm. As light as a feather. Mm. I love the recipe. <laughs> Did you hear that? She wants my recipe. Sarah Campbell wants my family recipe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, honey, run out to the dumpster and get that Crisco can. It's on the back. <laughs> I've got a hot tip for you. The bingo cow got into the bake sale to the tune of three dozen brand muffins, but everything you have on B1. Miss <laughs> Campbell, when we heard you were moving out here, we thought you'd stay holed up in your farmhouse and we'd only see you when you wanted to use us as a quaint backdrop for one of your shows. <laughs> but uh, on behalf of the citizens of Sedgwood, I'd just like to say, Sarah Campbell, your own... Makeup coming through. <laughs> This is the Sarah Campbell Authentic Church Supper Show. I want it quaint and I want it quick. Ten, five, four, three, two. What are you doing here? Sarah, you're the star. And if the star wants reality, who am I to argue? <laughs> you, you're a little too real. Get away from the camera, please. These lenses are very expensive. You brought a film crew to the church supper? It wasn't my idea, Mother. Well, you want me to do the goiter story, I'm gonna need hair and makeup. <laughs> and a goiter. Just, look, I, I know what you're doing. You think this footage is gonna be so bad that the network is gonna send our show back to New York City. Well, you know what? You don't scare me. I am a part of this community, and I believe in my fellow citizens of this fine, fine town of... Still Sedgwood. I gotta write that down. Now you, you're telling me the story about how you made your casserole. With chervil in it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I put chervil in it. Uh-huh. Are you getting this? Well, congratulations. You fit in for all of five minutes, then a camera shows up, and you turn our nice little church supper into an episode of the Sarah Campbell Show. You're just getting a little shiny. Get away from me. <laughs> so much for reality, Sarah. We didn't shoot one thing here we can use. It's just not our show. The pie contest is beginning. Entrance to the pie table, please. How about Sarah Campbell winning an old-fashioned pie-baking contest? Is that our show? <laughs> what? What, what are you doing? Uh, I'm sorry, there's a mistake. I isn't this a pie-baking contest? No, darling, this is the pie-eating contest. <laughs> okay, everyone, you know the rules. First one to finish the pie wins. 
And if you hurl before 30 minutes, not only will you be disqualified, but you also have to clean it up. <laughs> Get ready. Set. Eat. What do I do? Well, you want to be a part of this town? Yes. Then eat the damn pie. <laughs> That was impressive, honey. But I don't think I would have shown him that appetite on the first date. Not a date, mother. I never had a date where I stuck my whole face in a pie. I usually come home from a date and do that. I really admire a woman that can hold her pie. Our, uh... All your appetites that ravenous? Hmm? I'd love to chat, but um, I'm feeling a little queasy, and I want to hang in there for the full half hour. <laughs> yeah, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Besides, I'm uh, I'm with someone. Who? Uh, him. Oh, I don't know. It's not really a good policy for people who work together to date. Uh, of course, if you get fired, we won't be working together. Now, that's just flat-out sexual harassment. I'll give you ten bucks if you put your arm around me. Well, now you're talking. I want you to know I never had to pay for it before. Real and authentic, but it's also kind of repulsive. I need 15 copies and my Hanukkah shopping is done. This is really entertaining, Mom. I mean, I would watch this. Uh, well, that doesn't count. You're my daughter. You watch all my shows. Mm, that's right. That's what I do. Let's just tell the truth, Mom. You're just mad because you didn't win. Well, look at this guy. What a ripoff. I mean, half his pie is stuck in his beard. Sarah, please, I'm on with the network. You really should see this tape. Perfect Sarah Campbell scarfing down pie like a starving warthog. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. My thoughts exactly. One hour primetime special. Yes? Excuse me, may I have a word with the second place pie-eating champion of... What's the name of this town again? Very funny. No, no, you, 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 you don't need to look at that. Yeah, you're getting one for Hanukkah. <laughs> What's this? Petey hurled in the vestry at 28 minutes. Came in first. I won! <laughs> oh, this is like having your prom corsage pinned on by your date. Whoa. Excuse me. Well, that, that was an accident. <laughs> yeah, that's what they always said. Of course, you know, this wasn't a date. Oh, of course not. Although I just got a little bit more action than I planned. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, do you think I'm going to fit into this town? You done good. You surprised? Well, I, you know, I have to admit, I, I thought there was a possibility that you were going to embarrass me by being uh, standoffish and aloof and out of touch. But instead, you embarrassed me in a way I couldn't possibly have foreseen. Well, that means a lot to me. The Simple Life. We'll be right back. Thanks for making dinner for all of us, Ms. Campbell. This is really delicious. Well, just one of my special recipes. <laughs> I can't believe I lost 20 big ones on that chicken of yours. You told me the fix was in. Sorry. 
Not as sorry as Flojo. <laughs> You'd think with a leg like this, it could have finished in the money. <laughs> Freddie's enjoying community college. She was never happy in those stuffy private schools with the children of the privileged. Yeah, she's better off here with the children of the corn. <laughs> the art class should be in here. <laughs> that reminds me, we're out of Polish sausage. There's no need to be embarrassed. It's an art class, not Chippendales. Mother put the dollar away. Oh, hey, Mom. Hey, Grandma. I'll be done in just a second. Good work, Freddie. Let me know what you plan to exhibit in the show. Okay. Oh, your work's gonna be in an art show? Actually, Mom, that's not all. I was talking to Dad on the phone, and I told him about the show. Well, that's great, sweetheart. You shouldn't let our differences come between the two of you. And he said he's coming. <laughs> That's great, honey. Stop doing that. You look like the Joker. <laughs> Why can't you just admit that you hate his guts and you'd like to see him nailed to the nearest tree? Mother, I don't. Oh, yeah, that's me. <laughs> well, just because we're divorced doesn't mean we can't be civilized. I think it's important for Freddie's sake. Fine, fine. Live in denial. Spend the weekend with your ex-husband, a man who cheated on you, sponged off you for years, and maxed out your credit cards in one wild, sex-crazed weekend in Atlantic City. What, Joel never went to Atlantic City. Whoops, me again. <laughs> but there is an upside here. What's that? There's an opening in this art class. Sign me up. <laughs> of course, uh, I'll have to sit real, real close. Cataract. <laughs> That's my daughter, Sarah Campbell, expert on country living. Pretty convincing for a girl from Queens taping a show in Manhattan. One day, she decides to move her show to a real farmhouse in the country. But why do I have to go? Why does her producer have to go? And her daughter? And who's going to run this farm anyway? Okay. Maybe I could live here. Okay, kids, I'll be back by 11. Now, uh... You understand that occasionally I have to have some social interaction with another adult. We know, Uncle Luke. You've got needs. It's okay. We like staying with Miss Campbell. Yeah, she's got cool stuff, like TV and food. <laughs> no, Miss Campbell won't be able to watch you. She's busy. Her ex-husband's coming to dinner. Well, who's watching us, then? Hi, kids. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great, uh... Babysitter and a horror movie all in one. <laughs> oh, you scamps! <laughs> we are gonna have so much fun. I have the whole British nanny trial on tape! <laughs> Come on, kids. <laughs> wow! Miss Campbell, you look like a prize filly about to enter show ring number two. <laughs> I bet you get that all the time, huh? <sighs> But a girl never gets tired of hearing it. <laughs> I want to show Joel that I'm still a sexually desirable woman. A sexually desirable woman he can never, ever touch again. You know, I, just, I just don't understand this whole divorce thing. You know, I think when you stand up in front of God and witnesses and say, I do, that means forever. Well, you must be the last romantic. How is it you never got married? What, and sleep with the same woman the rest of my life? Don't you have a date? Yeah, I told her to meet me up here. If she wanted to see the house where Sarah Campbell shoots her TV show. You know, you're such a big star, and she's just a country girl. And you want to meet my ex-husband? You know, I admit I'm, I'm a little curious about the man who's, you know, won your heart. Why, Luke? It's like driving by a car wreck. You just got to slow down take a look. <laughs> Sarah, I, I don't think Melanie is the right person to be watching the children. She just took them for a walk in the woods. What's wrong with that? Well, she says she has a gingerbread cottage out there. Well, 
Maybe you should go keep an eye on them. No, oh, Sarah, I'm the producer of your television show. I deal with actors, directors, studio executives. What do I know about lunatics and children? <laughs> oh, all right, I'll go. And you, wait for your date in your own house. All right, fine. She never even heard of your TV show anyway. <laughs> Oh, I was just going to finish this off out here. I know Miss Manners doesn't like him in the house. Yeah, but what the hell? What's she going to do, divorce me? <laughs> hey, hey, Sarah! Hi, baby. <laughs> Joel, please don't bring that smelly butt of yours into my house. Yeah, and get rid of the cigar, too. <laughs> so, Muriel, you're still with us, huh? Looking slightly less rabid than usual. I got something else you can kiss, but I don't want to get up. Well, Sarah, you're looking, uh, incredible. Thank you. Have you had, like, you know, some work done? Yeah. She had an annoying little man removed from her life. <laughs> oh, howdy. Oh, howdy. And, uh, who are you, the Marlboro Man? <laughs> I'm Luke Barton. I'm the caretaker here. So tell me exactly, what does he take care of, Sarah? Oh, anything I feel needs his attention. Huh. What are you doing? I have no idea. <laughs> Daddy, hi. Hey, princess. Mm. Where's your stuff? You're staying here, right? No, no, no. I'm going to stay down in one of those mildewed log cabins at the Fairprice Motel. <laughs> I saw their sign. They have the complimentary shower caps and serial killers stay one night for free. <laughs> All right, Joel, you can stay here. Okay. Thank you. I will go get the guest room set up. Only if your mother insists. <laughs> Obviously, Sarah doesn't want you staying here. Why don't you ever listen to a word she says? Mother, Sweetheart, I... Sweetheart, please, I'm talking. Uh, <laughs> mother, I just want everything to go smoothly this weekend for Freddie's sake. Now, go in the kitchen, get more hors d'oeuvres, and you sit down and be quiet. Make him sit down, too. He's too damn tall. <laughs> Sarah! FYI, no need for concern. Melanie's got the children involved in a lively little game of hide and go stall. <laughs> hey, hey! Mr. Belvedere, how's it going? <laughs> Hello, Joel. It's always a pleasure. You know, my flight from LA was a killer. Why don't you grab me a cup of coffee? Uh, I'm not actually the secretary anymore. Unlike some people I know, I've actually managed to elevate myself to high executive position. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go. I'm it. <laughs> Joel, Joel, you remember Melanie? She's my assistant now. Wait a minute. Aren't you the stalker that kept breaking into our townhouse even after we electrified the perimeter? What, that 120 volts? <laughs> Please. I used to do three, 400 a pop at the clinic. <laughs> okay, kids. Ready or not, here I come. <laughs> You hired that Fruit Loop? She's a very hard worker. People can change. Well, that's true. But I've changed. I'm no longer the shallow, skirt-chasing pig I used to be. Oh, my. Hi, everyone. I'm Randy. Oh, that's your name. <laughs> Sorry. You gotta be at least this tall to get on this ride. <laughs> Do you guys need a room, too? <laughs> oh, no, we, we should go. Uh, Randy wants to see the full Monty tonight. Oh, I didn't know that was playing here in Sedgewood. Who said it was? <laughs> Good night. Good night. So, Joel, what are you really doing here? Well, I've got great news. Other than the first, I'm not going to be taking alimony anymore. Alimony? You say something back there, Goober? <laughs> she, she pays you alimony? But, Luke, are you coming? Yeah, I'll be right there, honey. Uh, isn't alimony for women? Actually, it's for the member of the failed relationship who provided all the emotional and moral support while the other member was attending to the finances. Yeah, women. Hey, isn't Ellie Mae waiting for you out there by the big cement pond? I just don't think it's right for a man to take money from a woman like that. Why haven't you left on your date? Can you advance me some of next week's salary? I'm a little short. <laughs> hey, I'm working for my money. Yeah, I'm working, too. As a matter of fact, I've got something that's going to be very big. Really? Yeah. Surprise, Sarah. One of my things is going to be working out. One of my ideas, one of my projects. What is it? It's a book about you. 
No, let, let me get this straight. In order for you to free yourself from Sarah Campbell, you're writing a book about Sarah Campbell? Ironic, isn't it? Joel, it's not one of those hateful tell-all books. Oh, no, no. It's gonna be a, a loving look back. It's got pictures of his a fat brunette and everything. <laughs> you are the lowest... All right, look. You're not showing a whole lot of interest in Miss Twin Silos out there. Or maybe she's, you know, two legs short of a hot time for you. You know, maybe you and I should step outside. Maybe you and I should step outside. Okay, but no hair pulling. Out! What do you think you're doing? Joel is the kind of person you just can't challenge. He'll say all kinds of things to push my buttons, but he'll never follow through on any of them. Good. Unless someone who has no idea what's going on interferes and calls his bluff. Lucky nobody did that, huh? <laughs> Look, I know you're just trying to protect me, but I don't need it. Joel is harmless. His plans never happen because, number one, he bluffs, and number two, he's lazy. So I can really handle this myself, okay? All right, fine. Yeah, I got stuff to do. I got a beautiful woman yeah. waiting for me. You didn't want any of these, did you? Nah. Once I spit in them, they lose their appeal. Uh, where are my kids? They're watching America's Most Wanted. It's Melanie's episode. Look, um, Joel, I, I promised myself that we wouldn't fight tonight, and I'm trying really hard for Freddie's sake. So what are you saying? That I'm the problem? Well, everything's always fine until you show up. And you're blaming that on me? Dinner's almost ready. Great, Great honey. honey. Uh, you two aren't fighting, are you? <laughs> no, you know we don't fight. I think it's high time you take responsibility for the problems that you caused in our marriage. Me? All I did was run a perfect home for you and make all the money while you were out having an affair with a 22-year-old aerobics instructor. Exactly. If you hadn't have been so perfect, I wouldn't have felt so insecure in my manhood and needed to find solace in her bump little arms. So you're saying that your affair is my fault? But I forgive you. <laughs> For crying out loud. Kids, I'll catch up with you in a minute. Luke? You know, growing up on a farm, I've been around a lot of manure. You know, I, I've shoveled it, I've, I've loaded it onto wagons, but I've never actually seen it stand up and talk. No! <laughs> Luke, I can handle this. Oh, is this how this works? You're all nicey-nicey with me, and then I gotta take crap from Judd Fry, the idiot farm no, man? No, 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 both of you, stop it! Joel, Luke doesn't know you. He doesn't understand that when you say all these things to me, you're just trying to push my buttons. I told you that all oh, way back, say, about five minutes ago. What about that book? It was going to be a nice little memoir, but that is not the book I am going to write now. The gloves are off here, baby. Uh, you're not going to write that book. Oh, really? And why not? Well, one, because you're lazy, and two, because you're a bluffer. <laughs> well, surprise, surprise! <laughs> I've already written one chapter of that book. If you're interested, you can check it out tomorrow in People Magazine. Maybe you can get somebody to read it to you. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm going to be over at the Fair Price Motel. Look, if you want to make all this up to me for being so rude, I'm going to get a double bed and we can have a little sex. <laughs> Is Randy's number listed? No! No! is Jill's article is definitely in people. It's a pre-publication excerpt to test the waters. What's the good news? Well, you know that lawyer they've got? That arrogant 24-year-old she-wolf from Radcliffe? Yeah. I got a date with her. <laughs> yeah, kids, I just want to give you a little life lesson here, show you it takes a big man to admit he made a mistake, because if you apologize and it comes from the heart, people will forgive you. Miss Campbell? I interfere between you and your ex-husband, and I truly am sorry. Well, a fat lot of good that does me now. I told you and told you, but no, you wouldn't listen. Okay, kids, life lesson's over. <laughs> when are we gonna get a copy of this article? Well, it's going to be fairly pricey, but I pulled a few strings. Between the helicopter, the private courier, the hovercraft up the Hudson, I can promise you, you'll be the first person to lay your hands on... Mother, 
Where did everybody get these magazines? I bought up every copy in town. I thought, why should I let a bunch of strangers read the intimate details of my daughter's personal life when the people she knows and loves would find it much funnier? <laughs> oh, Miss Campbell. I just want you to know this article has made me feel a lot closer to you. I, too, went to Camp Rotunda for big-boned kids. Yes. <laughs> you remember the motto? Easy on the mayo. Live another day -o. <laughs> oh. Um, Mother, you're not even reading the article about me. I've seen you as a fat brunette. <laughs> Where's Freddie? She's at college, getting ready for the art show. Did she say anything about Joel storming out of here last night? No, she seemed fine. What'd you tell her? I told her what happened. I told her that her father decided to stay at a motel because he had an allergic reaction to the potpourri in the guest bathroom. <laughs> Sarah, your daughter's 19 years old. Who are you protecting, her or yourself? Why can't you admit you're angry? I am not angry at Joel. <laughs> okay, maybe I'm a little angry. Of course you are. You spend your whole life decorating and refinishing, trying to make your life perfect. And what's wrong with that? Because it's not perfect, and it never will be. You married a schmuck, it ended badly, and trying to pretend it doesn't bug you isn't making things any better. It isn't, is it? Oh, oh. <sighs> Remember, it takes big bones yeah. to support a big heart. <laughs> thank you, thank you for all your support. Okay, I'm gonna try this one more time. I'm really sorry. Oh, Luke, it isn't your fault. Uh, this article would have been published anyway, and, and I understand why you did it, and then maybe I should have done it years ago. Or would it have killed you to say that in front of the kids? <laughs> kids, life lesson in here now! <laughs> I just wanted to say, you know, Ms. Campbell asked me, uh, you know, made a big point asking me not to give you a hard time, and I, and I did anyway, so I, you know, that was insensitive of me, and I'm sorry. Just don't take it out on her. Well, I think someone has discovered their feminine side. <laughs> you know, let me put it another way. If uh, you publish that book, I'll personally tear your head off. <laughs> I think I should warn you. I just admit I'm your boxing at Brandeis. Come on, baby. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna have to kill you just for that. <laughs> I just came over to make it up to Joel. 
a simple apology would have sufficed. Sarah, to get this guy off me, put a quarter in a meter and hop in. <laughs> no, leave you. You apologize to me and then you come here and you start in again. I know, I know. Whatever stupid, irritating thing Joel says, you just keep your mouth shut. Yeah. No. No. Not anymore. Because it doesn't work. It just encourages you. So you go ahead and you publish that book. You say whatever you want to about me, but Joel, I'm warning you from now on, if you push my buttons, I'm going to push back. <laughs> My first art show, and you're both here. We're very proud of you. Yeah. You know, sometimes I wonder why we ever got married, and then I look at you, and I know why. Your mother was pregnant. So? Relax, Mom. I already knew that. How? Hello, this week's people. <laughs> Ooh, judges look at my painting. Gotta go. Look, I think you should know that I called my publisher, and I told him that I'm not gonna write that book. You've been hurt too much already. Couldn't sell it, huh? Nah, you gave me the usual lame excuse about sleazy, unprofessional writing. But the truth is, nobody wanted to read a book about you. You know, the old me would have nodded and smiled and let a comment like that eat away at me for weeks. But the new me... Mother! What are you doing? I didn't want you to see that. I'm sorry you saw that. I, I just, the truth is, sometimes I get a little peeved with your father. I know that. I mean, there were clues, like the divorce. <laughs> Mom, I just thought if you wanted to pretend you weren't fighting, then fine. Well, I'd pretend I believed it. You are so sweet. Mm. Well, are we done? Not quite. Our 10th anniversary, a travel iron. Oh. The Simple Life will be right back. This one's nice. I see a cold pallor of death. <laughs> it's steadily creeping across her face until all that's left is the dawning horror of her own mortality. <laughs> You gonna be like this all evening? Yeah. <laughs> okay, Miss Campbell, we'll be camping up the lake for two days. Here's the key to my cabin. Harvey's coming in to do my chores, and you know, all the animals are okay, so if you have something to ask me, you should ask me now. Well, what about your stud bull? Oh, he won't give you any trouble just as long as you don't wear anything short and tight. If you drop anything on the ground, I'd just wait till I get back. Here. Charlotte, I told you, your pig's gonna be fine. He doesn't need a list of special care instructions. Oh, I'd be happy to massage his hindquarters with baby oil. Oh, sure, you'll do it for the pig. <laughs> oh, how sweet. You sing the pig lullabies every night? Yes. It's important for my pig to have a peaceful, tranquil life. For the ham to be really juicy when you slaughter it. All right, dear. Equipment's packed, truck's loaded. Come on, let's go. I have to go to the bathroom. Me too. Well, I told you to go before we left the house. We did. But we're going to be in the woods for two days, and we just want to hear that beautiful flushing sound one last time. <laughs> oh, this is going to be great. My mother, my daughter, you know. I don't think the three of us have spent a whole weekend together. You know, honey, that's not the big coincidence you think it is. <laughs> Mom, in theory it sounds good, but in reality, one of us would just end up stuffed in the wood chipper, and I'd miss you. I gotta stick right here by the telephone. I'm the first alternate in the Flushing Bombers Canasta team. Evelyn Shapiro's bypass didn't go so well, so... I'm hoping. <laughs> what about you, Greg? You know, I, I, I thought it might be fun to do some research down in Amish country. We could ride all those buggies, look at quilts, eat some scrapple. Scrapple? Sarah, I make it a policy not to eat any food that has the word crap in the middle. 
Besides, I'm going to be in New York sucking up to all the station owners who carry our show. It's the broadcaster's convention this weekend? No, no, Sarah, you don't have to come. No, no, no real business is actually done there. It's just an excuse for people to come to New York, drink too much, and have sex with people they're not married to. <laughs> oh, good Lord, I'm late. Uh, uh, okay. I don't have to work every weekend. No, I'll just kick back here and relax. Five, four, three, two, one. What the hell am I going to do all weekend? <laughs> Yeah, that's the trouble with you workaholics. You want to relax, you just don't know how. You should try going fishing sometime. Get away from everything. Uh, well, you find you'd be a new woman. That sounds like a great idea. No, 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 Look, we'd really love to have you, but... Wait, but... if you come, who's gonna watch my pig? Yes! I mean, yes! I mean, that that's the only thing preventing you from coming with us, which we would otherwise thoroughly enjoy. <laughs> well, I could take care of a damn pig. How hard could that be? <laughs> I haven't had this much attention paid to my body in 30 years. <laughs> I don't even clean myself in these areas. That's my daughter, Sarah Campbell, expert on country living. Pretty convincing for a girl from Queens taping a show in Manhattan. One day, she decides to move her show to a real farmhouse in the country. But why do I have to go? Why does her producer have to go? And her daughter? And who's going to run this farm anyway? OK, maybe I could live here. Set up for ten, then use the bathroom. Well, what's taking her so long? I don't know. Maybe there was a long line at the ladies' tree. <laughs> you know, that's exactly the kind of smart Alec remark I don't want to hear when Miss Campbell gets here. Even though she's on this trip with us, she's still my boss, and you know, let's not be making fun of her. Yo ho! <laughs> oh my God, it's baby Huey. <laughs> Oh, my, my hips aren't really this big. I, I just didn't have time to have these altered. We're fishing. This ain't a fashion show. I'm sorry. I should have known that. By your hat. This is my lucky hat. You know, I find it really hard to believe that you've ever gotten lucky in that hat. <laughs> Uncle Luke? Is Miss Campbell going to be in our contest? No, she's never been fishing before. She'd be sure to lose. Would you like to be in it? <laughs> How does it work? The person who catches the most fish gets to wear the lucky hat. There's incentive. <laughs> All right, now to cast off, you bring it behind your head like this, right. and you snap it forward and release it into the string. All right, I'll, I'll guide your arm. Um, you know, uh... I have to do this to teach you how to cast. Yes, I understand. You're not just carried away by the sight of me and these hip waders. <laughs> All right, now, now bring your arm back. All right. And put some muscle into it and really snap it. <laughs> oh, my God, the lucky hat. Well, just reel it in. All right, calm down. It's just a hat. How lucky could it be? Oh, my God. Oh, look, I caught a fish. It likes me. It's wagging its tail. Let me see the fish, all right? I, oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, God, careful, careful. Oh, jeez. Oh, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, God. Get it out. All right, hold yeah. still. Hold oh, still. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Don't let it die. It's going to die anyway. Not in my pants. Okay, fine. Here. What are you doing? Starting to swim upstream. <laughs> 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 
Why don't you just come inside and join us for dinner? Don't want to. You are such a sore loser. Just because I won the contest. Hey, I say anything I have to grab out of your pants, you count as half mine. She's got all kinds of cool stuff in there. Well, we got all kinds of cool stuff out here. She's got Sega Genesis with a virtual helmet. What? Well, I got a new pocket knife with a with a toothpick and tweezers. So we could be in there playing Starship Troopers or out here picking our teeth and tweezing each other. So I'd later, we'd sit around the campfire and, you know, tell ghost stories. Charlotte, you love that one about the hook. It always makes you scream. I've been faking it for years. Oops. There's our dinner. Is everything ready? Yeah, we put out the risotto, the spinach crostini, the mango chutney, and the twice-baked brion croup. Damn it, this is supposed to be a fishing trip. Shh, the souffle will fall. <laughs> well, are you coming? No. Okay. Suit yourself. Don't you at least want a fork? No. All a man needs in the woods is his trusty knife. Fine. Oh, and a suture kit. Here's your invitation. Swing with this. Oh, this damn tent. The, the, the microwave always blows the fuse for the stereo. <laughs> Sweetheart, flip that alternate power switch. Martini style, it's time to ask you late. Your destiny away, so don't be late for Martini's at eight. We're crying out loud, aren't you gonna get that? No, it's just a fax. I still have email, you know. Well, yeah, when Daniel Boone went in the woods, he didn't need a fax machine. Well, he also wore a raccoon on his head. We've come a long way. Well, who died and made you the hat police? Well, who died and made you the fax machine destroying guy? All right, look, look, look let's not fight. I'll, I'll pay for the fax machine. How much was it? $1,400. Okay, let's fight. <laughs> look. Yeah, you know, I know you're a workaholic, but you just gotta learn how to relax. I know you're right. I've just always been afraid that everything's gonna fall apart if I'm not reachable. But I've built my career over 16 years, and it's not gonna fall apart just because I don't get one lousy fax. <laughs> Why are you watching Elvis movies with a pig? He's already seen Casablanca. Mom would freak if she sees you let it sit on the couch. He's clean. We took a bubble bath in your tub. <laughs> By the way, I get a new loofah. Grandma? <laughs> what is happening to you? I don't know. One day I'm drinking coffee in Queens. The next day, I'm taking a sitz bath with a pig and booger holler. <laughs> Here, you take it. It's probably just for you again. Hello? 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 <laughs> this is the last time I'm going to tell you, put the old woman on the phone. Hello? 
suspicions are dropping us right and left. And do you know why? Because Sarah's not here. I phoned her, I faxed her. Where the hell is she? I thought you said you could handle it. But all the stars are here. Barry the Big Red Dinosaur is handing out <laughs> bags of happy dust. <laughs> Xenon, the warrior goddess, has got all these gullible, oversexed morons lined up to get into a tent for sword fights and a lap dance. Oi, 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 oi. That's cutting. <laughs> and do you know what I've got to lure potential buyers? Two dozen simple life spatulas. Well, what do you want me to do? I want you to get down here and hand out spatulas. <laughs> I'm gonna go after Sarah. She's never been unreachable. I have a feeling something truly horrible and hideous is happening in those woods. Kumbaya, Can I have a three-speed massaging sleeping bag with radiant heat for Christmas? And can I have a solar-powered blow-up jacuzzi? No, you're both getting socks. Kumbaya. <laughs> Thanks for corrupting my kids. You have a little cappuccino foam right there. Someone's getting on my nerves, kumbaya. Oh, Lord, kumbaya. One more time! Well, it's late. I gotta hit the sack. Me too. Well, it's, it's, it's only 6.45. In hell, there is no time. <laughs> We have to get to that convention. Stop looking at me that way. You can't come. <laughs> Besides, you might not make it. We have to go through Chinatown. <laughs> Grandma, I'm starting to worry about you. Do you talk to all the farm animals? Of course not. Oh. I'm giving the ducks the silent treatment since they swallowed my mahjong tiles. <laughs> Glad you made me unplug everything. And finally relax and enjoy the silence of the woods. Do you have a bug zapper on? Well, surely you didn't want me to unplug that. <laughs> well, everything. All right. It's the clapper zapper. <laughs> Is that better? Mm. So much better. <laughs> Let's not be fanatics. <laughs> and there was the body with a lovely non-stick carbon steel serrated knife in its back. <laughs> and hanging from the Gen Air double convection oven door was a big, bloody hawk. <laughs> hey, did you hear the one about the hitchhiker who disappeared forever? Yes, Uncle Luke. <laughs> What's that noise? Could be a bear. Kids, get in the tent. What? Don't worry, I've got a shotgun. Oh, damn! It's Greg! Well, he won't make much of a rug, but what the hay? Oh, jeez. <laughs> Greg, God, what are you doing here? Well, obviously, I'm the main course at Mosquito All You Can Eat Night. <laughs> Sarah, your phone is broken. No, it's not broken. I turned it off. When Daniel Boone went into the woods, he didn't need a phone. Well, Sarah, let's not forget the single most important historical fact about Daniel Boone. His show was cancelled. <laughs> and yours is about to be. Greg, what happened? I'll tell you on the way down Walton's Mountain. <laughs> the, the convention's over, but if we leave right now, we can make it to the farewell dinner and we can salvage something. But first, I have to use the facilities. What are they? Second tree to the left. Just grab some leaves on your way. <laughs> oh, good God. I knew it. I knew it. I knew if I let things go for one day, I would lose everything. It was probably that fact. Yeah, I shouldn't have thrown it away. This is all my fault. No, no, it's okay. It's okay. I'm the one who wanted to relax. Besides, Greg exaggerates. I'm probably just losing a few markets. Oh, my God, I'm hyperventilating. Give me this bag to breathe into. No, that's the bag with the fish heads in it. Uh, 
Look, I'm, uh, I'm sure everything's gonna be all right. Right, right. Okay, worst case scenario, I lose my show. I'll survive. I've still got my farm. Right. Of course, I'm really gonna have to cut your salary. Kids, let's go. We're going to New York City. You stay here. Finish a camping trip. No, I, I got you into this. I want to help you get out of it. Besides, you're gonna need someone to guide you down the mountain. Well, Greg made it up here all right. Yeah, but he's gonna be walking kind of funny on the way down. He just headed off the latrine with a handful of poison oak. <laughs> Serving up good ratings. <laughs> the simple life we Gen Xers think it's rad. Hey, if I take a spatula, will you spank me with it? <laughs> but you're Barry the Big Red Dinosaur. I love you. You love me. I'm in room 1603. <laughs> Okay, I see the people I need to talk to. You follow behind and close the deals. If anybody asks about my outfit, it's a publicity stunt. If they ask about Luke and the kids, tell them I'm uh, extending my demographic to men and children. Now, what can I do to help? Gooba, you and the young'uns have done quite enough. You don't have the class for a place like this. Oh, God. <laughs> well, if it isn't Sarah Campbell, the farmer's fantasy. Hello, Barry. Hey, babe, still whipping up the vitchels? <laughs> still not anatomically correct? <laughs> Mom, nobody wants one of these spatulas. I'll take one. Greg. <laughs> okay, Sarah, time to go to work. That is Woodrow Stillwell. He's got a string of stations across the southwest. If we get him, we'll turn the tide. Well, Mother's talking to him. I'm sure she's putting in a good word. My idea is a new game show. It's based on Canasta, but everybody wears loincloths. <laughs> Was that the guy over there? The big shot who's gonna drop you? I'm gonna go talk to him again, but I have to approach him in just the right way. We just walk over there and grab him by the oysters and say, hey, how the hell are you? <laughs> That's ridiculous. First of all, he's not even standing by the oysters. <laughs> oh, good Lord, he wouldn't. <gasps> Whoa! What in shame? You know, there's only two people that'll grab me like that. My wife is back in Texas. <laughs> Luke Barton, how the hell are you? Hey, you Woody, you old son of a gun. <laughs> <laughs> You, you two know each other? Oh. But what are the odds in that? About the same as Jed Clampett striking oil. <laughs> My first station back in Sweetwater ran the rodeo when Luke here was an up-and-coming star. What are you doing here? Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm here with Sarah Campbell. You know, she's got that uh, country living show. Yeah, I, I had to drop that. Coming from New York and all, it just kind of seemed a little, uh, fruity tooty. Yeah, I know. I know, I know, but, uh, you know, they moved it. it. Comes from my farm now. It, it's genuine, real, heartfelt country living. Because whether I'm milking a cow or snagging the biggest fish on a fly fishing trip, the message of the simple life is still the same. It's keep life simple. Well, I like that. I think I can find a place on the schedule for y'all. Give me a call. It's nice meeting you. Good seeing you, boy. You too, partner. But I, I, I can't believe that. You know, if you hadn't thrown my facts in the river, we wouldn't be here. You wouldn't have bumped into Woodrow Stillwell, and I might not have a career, which I was trying to get away from when I went on the fly fishing trip in the first place. <laughs> Tell me this ain't a lucky hat. <laughs> the Simple Life will be right back. I don't know. 
I just don't find this show very believable. Rami. <laughs> Adam Arkin and Cameron Diaz, tonight on CBS. Mother, please, we're getting ready to shoot a show. Couldn't you sit over there by the door? What's my motivation? <laughs> uh, Miss Campbell, do you have a needle and thread? I just ripped a big old hole in the back of my jeans. That'll do it. <laughs> If you don't mind, we're waiting for the president of the company that owns our show to arrive. So go away, Haystacks Calhoun. <laughs> None of any non-professional people on the set. So, uh, what does she do? Hopefully the president of the company that owns our show. <laughs> well, I'm going up to my room. Why don't you come up and take off those pants? <laughs> Will you sew them up for me? No. There are things must go well today. Since we've been in the country, our ratings have sort of, excuse me for using a lot of technical show business jargon, suck. <laughs> Television people, you fuss, you worry, you drive yourselves crazy over every little detail, and then you end up doing a show about cream cheese. If you're talking about soft cheese's hard choices, that was a simple life classic. <laughs> right. His people tell me Philip Devine's helicopter should arrive here at any moment, and he's in a bad mood. Oh, no. Actually, he was in a good mood this morning. Then about 10 a.m., his left eyebrow twitched. Then he sort of sighed. He sighed three or four times, possibly as many as five. How do you know this? It was on entertainment tonight. <laughs> well, why do you care so much what this guy thinks? Oh, Luke, he is our boss. He pays our salary. You know how people tend to want to please their employer? Hang on their every word? Uh-huh. <laughs> Divine coming here can only be bad news. Oh, God, why don't you just have the earth swallow me up right now? I was joking. I was only joking. Sarah. Philip. Oh, you look fabulous. Thank you. This place is great. The show's never been better. Your ratings are in the toilet. Start looking for work. <laughs> My star. Philip, I made this toast of pecans you like. Oh, thank you, Sarah. I'm here to pull you a plug. Greg, would you like some toasted nuts? No, thanks. Just had some. <laughs> That's my daughter, Sarah Campbell, expert on country living. Pretty convincing for a girl from Queens taping a show in Manhattan. One day, she decides to move her show to a real farmhouse in the country. But why do I have to go? Why does her producer have to go? And her daughter? And who's going to run this farm anyway? OK, maybe I could live here. Crumpets are baked. Crumpets? Dynamite, eh? Our viewers love crumpets. Don't talk to me so much, okay? <laughs> Done talking. Zip my lip. Call me Marcel Marceau. He's that French guy that doesn't say anything. Hi, Miss Campbell. Hey, you guys. Kids, please, we're rehearsing. Wait, 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 wait. I want to talk to these kids. What are their names? Uh... Wednesday and Pugley. <laughs> Do you kids watch this show? No, we don't have a TV. <laughs> Uncle Luke says we should spend our time reading books, doing our homework, and playing outside in the fresh country air. Oh, well, you tell your Uncle Luke that he's full of crap. <laughs> we don't talk to him like that. You would if you watch TV. <laughs> Look, Sarah, I really don't want to cancel your show, but it's missing something. A male point of view would be good. Uh, I have input into every show. Like I said, a male point of view would be good. 
Uh, Miss Campbell, I hate to barge in on your show like this, but will someone tell me what the hell happened out there in the yards like a tornado blew through here? It was a helicopter, okay? Or for you rustic types, iron bird in sky. I. <laughs> Well, a flying lawn chair knocked out one of my goats. Uh, uh, please. <laughs> Mr. Devine is in a bad mood. He's in a bad mood. Try starting your day out giving mouth to mouth to a goat. <laughs> you know, I saw you doing that, but I wasn't going to say anything. <laughs> can we can we please just get on with the rehearsal? After you're toasting your homemade crumpets, uh, curing your own country ham, poaching your fresh laid eggs, uh, you assemble it all and voila. You see what you've done? Yeah, you spent four hours making an egg McMuffin. <laughs> I like them. Put them on your show or you're canceled. <laughs> you're joking. Hey. If I were joking, he'd be laughing like a hyena, right? Right. It's not joking, sir. <laughs> we'll, we'll get Luke on the show. Just, just please, don't, don't cancel us. I hate begging. Right. I, understandable. I hate it, too. How do you feel about groveling? <laughs> I'm open. Let me see it. Please don't cancel us, <laughs> Joe. I don't like it. Don't move, that's hot. Hello? Luke? Sarah, I can't stress enough how important this is. Well, I'm sure he'll be happy to come on the show. I ain't doing your fruity TV show. Now, now you talk him into it. Why me? Because he doesn't have a crush on me. Well, he doesn't have a crush on me. Why, did he say something? <laughs> hey, Miss Campbell. Luke, please, it's just one show, and next week Philip will be on to something else. I don't know anything about TV. Well, what's to know? You sit there and we point a camera at you. A monkey could do it. <laughs> well, it takes a little more than that. You have to know which is your camera. You have to know how to hit your mark. All right. Train monkey. <laughs> I got stuff to do. I'm supposed to take Charlotte's group of Indian princesses to their powwow. Oh, Mother could do that. Well, does your mother know anything about Native American rituals? She was there when they bought Manhattan. <laughs> well, I'd like to help you out, Miss Campbell. But what about my chores? Well, picking up eggs and putting out cow food. Any idiot could do that. <laughs> well, it takes a little, a little more than that. It takes a... Trained idiot. <laughs> Training starts at 5 a.m. Uh, this doesn't seem like a very good idea. Ah, you'll be great at slopping the pigs. I mean, I seen you. You put out pizza for the crew. You pull your hand back real fast so it don't get bit off. Uncle Luke, the bull's making that weird noise again. Oh, he's all bound up from that new feed. Needs an enema. Get busy, son. I got a show to do. All right, girls. I'm your new leader, Mrs. Lipschitz. <laughs> You're supposed to have an Indian name. Okay. I'm, uh... Squall Lipschitz. <laughs> and this is my, uh, my assistant, Princess, kicked out of prep school. Okay, Charlotte, uh, what are we supposed to do now? You're supposed to help us think of a craft, something the Native Americans did. You know what we need to do? We need to take Native American customs into the 20th century. Casino gambling. I never thought it was a good idea to move the, movie the show, show to the, the country. country. <laughs> but then we wouldn't have found, wouldn't have found Luke. Hoodley, 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 hoodley. Yeah, I get the point. 
much, Mr. Devine. I'm just one of the little people. But I want to thank you for giving our show another chance. You're beautiful. Thank you, man. Thank you. <laughs> Somebody get that guy a belt. <laughs> okay, people, ready to roll? <clears throat> Sarah Campbell, Festival of Desserts, marker, take one, and in five, four, three. Hello and welcome. I'm Sarah Campbell with my very special guest, Luke Barton. Howdy, folks. <laughs> Today, we're going to make a variety of scrumptious country treats, ending up with an old-fashioned taffy pull. Luke, have you ever done taffy the old-fashioned way? Yeah, once in Abilene, but I don't think that was a real name. <laughs> Cut! That's not what it says in my script. No, no, it says, gee, Miss Campbell, these sumptuous treats are almost as sweet as you are. <laughs> now, who wrote this crap? You know, writers work very hard, and I don't think it's very nice of you to cast a You wrote it? Uh-huh. <laughs> well, that explains why you get all the lines, and I just sit there and go, uh, gee, how, how does a souffle rise? You know, I'm not an idiot. I mean, why, why can't I explain how a souffle rises? Okay, how does a souffle rise? Shut up. I don't know how a souffle rises. I don't care. <laughs> I mean, why, why can't I talk about something that I, I know something about, like, you know, how to make a frito pie or, or how to do, do, do rope tricks or something? Because it's not my show. That's right. That's a totally different show. Totally different. Not the same. Apples and oranges. <laughs> this man makes this show better. Let's let him do his thing. Do his thing. Set him free. Let my farm man go. <laughs> you know... I'm used to being brown-nosed, but you and my rear end are practically engaged. And that's how a souffle rises, from a man's point of view. Are we done? Not yet. We still gotta rustle up some frito pie. <laughs> Miss Campbell, the regulars are here. What do you want me to do with them? Fans. It's okay. Let them in. <laughs> Sorry I missed the show. But I'm really getting the hang of this whole running of fun thing. Did you remember to close the barn door? Of course, I'm not an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Off you go. Stay away from the mint jelly. Oh. <laughs> hey, Mom. Hi. How did the end of your princess powwow go? Fabulous. We learned a lot of native dances and all the words to hey ya, hey ya, hey ya. <laughs> well, the girls' gambling teepee was the hit of the powwow till we got busted. <laughs> The damn State Gaming Commission didn't buy the midget story. <laughs> Mother, where's Charlotte? She's in jail. <laughs> I let her take the rap, because she's a juvie. They'll go easy on her. Oh, Mother. <laughs> oh, relax, will you? She's back home safe and sound. What's the matter with you? Oh, I don't know. Oh, everything's just not right since Luke horned in on my show. Horned in? <laughs> you begged him to do it. Oh, he wanted to. Luke isn't going to do something just because you beg him. Tell me about it. <laughs> he won't take cash, either. Oh, well, Miss Campbell, uh, there's something I need to talk to you about. Uh, you know, after we shoot the next show, I, I don't think I want to do this anymore. Oh. <laughs> Well, you know, it was a little fun for, for a little while, but it's just not me. Well, we'll really miss you. Bye. Well, I, well, I, I just hope you don't blame me when your ratings plummet. Oh. 
Oh, Luke, my ratings are not going to plummet, okay? I'm not even sure the ratings were up because of you. I was making my peanut clusters, and my cluster ratings are always through the roof. Well, you just mad because I get all the laughs. Well, I do the whole show, and you just sit there and make your little smart alecky remarks, which are neither smart nor alecky. Yeah, well, well, there's gratitude for you. I just came on the show because you came down to my cabin and begged me. You were nobody, farm boy, and I made you a star. <laughs> there they are, my two little stars. Two stars, constellation of two. <laughs> I got the audience research on your show. They love you. They love that chemistry you two have. With chemistry with her? With him? That's what I'm talking about. UST, unresolved sexual tension. All the great TV couples have it. Sam and Diane, Bruce and Sybil, Bert and Ernie. <laughs> Not Siskel and Ebert. That's just a rumor. Right, people, no script pages. If you want to quit after this show, that's fine. It's not going to hurt my ratings, and even if it did, it's worth it not to watch you crimp a pie crust with your spurs. <laughs> oh, my God. Did you read this? I'm supposed to kiss you? Did you write this? <laughs> no. Greg. Greg, what is this kissing scene? Philip Devine put that in himself. Isn't it marvelous? <laughs> Now, you two sort of end up in a food fight and wind up in a passionate kiss? No, it's just stupid and totally unbelievable. Mm, mm. Right, places, let's shoot. <laughs> Here we go in five, four, three, two. Oh! <laughs> Actually, it says we're supposed to start slowly and build the fight with intensity to a fever pitch. But I should have known you'd be one of those really quick guys. Hey, I just want to get this over with, which is probably why all those other guys were so quick, too. <laughs> stupid. Yeah. Did you get that? Do we need to do another take? You're uh, still not going to quit the show, are you? Well, I mean, did you want do you want me to stay? Well, uh, if Philip thinks it will help my ratings, I suppose I could keep up this act. <laughs> act, right. What are you implying? You weren't acting. You meant that when you kissed me. Okay. First of all, you kissed me first, okay? <laughs> no, uh, no, no, no. I don't buy it. You ain't that good an actress. I can fake a lot more than a kiss if I have to. You, uh, you wouldn't have to. <laughs> oh.
Uh, can I see your pass, please? My pass? It's the Luke and Sarah show. I'm Luke. <laughs> hey, 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 that's my chair. Miss Campbell, what's going on? Just a minute. Philip, didn't they like the kiss? They loved it. Oh, how they loved it. Well, what's the problem? Didn't go far enough? <laughs> Look, as soon as the sexual tension thing is resolved, show's over. Everybody knows that. I don't even know why you did it. Because you told us to, you overinflated windbag. <laughs> did I say that out loud? Maybe it's all for the best. I think it's probably good to go back to the way my show used to be. Go back? It's over. We're pulling your plug. Everybody who's standing near a plug, pull it out and leave. <laughs> Not you. Somebody else pull out his plug. <laughs> Hello. Huh. How do you like that? <laughs> I'm fired. The new guy loves you. Good luck. All right. Places. The new guy loves her. Don't touch me. No touching. Hands off. Free the farm workers. <laughs> and five. Four, three. Hello, I'm Sarah Campbell, and this is The Simple Life. <laughs> the Simple Life will be right back. Then, Dingle Mouse said we have to rescue the fairy princess from the wicked witch, Badger. <laughs> I know you've heard this before. Shut up. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Love you. Mwah, love you.